Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode. Today we're taking a sponsored look at Monez, a play to earn RPG that offers 3D graphics and complex gameplay with multiple game modes, multiple characters, so many upgrades in loads of different things like your character, your gear that you have, and offers guild features. So much to this game, we're gonna be looking in depth into it and talking about how you can get in your hands on a mystery chest from the initial NFT offering. This NFT sale could be really, really lucrative in the long run because they offer something very different from other people, which is 50% lifetime commission on transaction fees. So these will be 3% on the marketplace. So you could earn 1.5% on every sale that ever happens after owning the NFT from the whitelisted address that you've purchased from. So it's gonna be recorded and maintained throughout its sales. So it could be really lucrative in the long run. And of course you can play it and it will have value in the game. You can upgrade it. And yeah, then you can choose to sell it on. And if loads of people sell it on beyond you, you can make a serious investment return. We won't be waiting long for this one as well. Once you've got your NFT assets, you will only be waiting until the 10th of May to be able to play the main net launch. So this game is gonna offer a lot. We're gonna be taking a look at everything in terms of the details, trailers, website, uh, web by paper, how to get involved in the NFT offering. We're gonna be taking a comprehensive look at everything you need to know how to get involved in this project and what it has to offer. Of course, as it's sponsored, we will be doing Watch to Earn. So if you wanna have a chance to win one of five lots of 60 USDT, all you gotta do is post the code which will appear at some random point during today's video and then go to discord post in the competition wallet section your youtube name and wallet address and a random comment picker will select from the people who have entered five people okay let's get to today's episode monas is a new generation play to earn rpg game built on the avalanche network so we can expect cheap gas fees and very easy to use you can add it to your metamask wallet You'll be able to enjoy exciting gameplay, but also connect with other players through the social features and earn long-term profits from the player-driven economy. They're here for the play to earn revolution, but has compelling competitive advantages in comparison to other NFT games in the market. The 50% lifetime commission is one thing that makes it really stand out in my opinion. They'll offer superior game design with high quality 3D graphics and gameplay. The social driven features will be a big drive as well. They'll have guild activities, tournaments, in-game interactions between players, profile visiting function, in-game affiliate program, and a DAO. Monas is here for the next generation of player driven economy and play to earn, where they'll contain a variety of systems of spend and earn for both tokens, currency, and NFTs. They offer strong tokenomics and have a high profile team with an appealing background and much experience in technology generally and blockchain particularly and we already have a game that is ready built and just being used this game offers one of the most complex rpgs that we've seen in the nft gaming space over 200 characters each that will have their own story that will be interwoven into a giant storyline that will be the universe within Monas. I think this could be really exciting and based on what I've seen in the gameplay which we'll look at now it just has, it looks like it has so much to offer. Here is a look at some of the different modes within this and just goes to show how much complexity there is in terms of the upgrading system and the utility of the NFTs themselves that they'll have in the game. Game modes, so not just one, we've got eight different game modes. There'll be adventure where you can explore maps, defeat bosses and discover the game plot. We can see really good 3D design here. Twin tower where you'll be able to climb the floors of the twin towers to collect heroes and craft stones. There'll be dungeon mode where you can join the dungeon for one free turn per day to earn core materials. You can see this turn-based system that has some complexity to it which we'll look at in a minute, but there'll be an arena where you can join PvP battles where you can make your name on the leaderboards of the seasons. There will also be a variety of different growth systems, so this is where the upgrades come in. You can upgrade your account skills and stats using trophies that you've earned. You can level up and you can use other heroes to level up other heroes as well. So any of the other things that you have lying around can have some utility to them. You can evolve, so upgrade your hero to the next star level. So that would be one way that you can increase its stats. You can transcend, so you can increase the max level of a hero. This will mean you can increase those stats further. You can enhance a hero to increase the hero's stats even further. And there will be formation enhanced, so you can increase a formation stats. So as a team, collaboratively, you can increase the overall stats that they have. You can enhance items, so the items that you hold will also have individual stats and things like crit damage, crit percentage. Attendance, so there'll be special rewards for daily attendance. These will be things that you'll be able to use in your upgrading. There'll be daily, weekly, monthly missions and other types of missions to keep you engaged. There'll be a school where you can learn how to use game features and earn rewards in the process. 
There'll be an election where you can collect hero groups to earn NES tokens. Now there'll also be really complex, good social features in the game. There will be guilds, so you'll be able to join guilds in building, defending the castle, fighting in guild wars, and from that getting rewards. There'll be a friend and chat system where you can connect with other players. And here's what I was talking about earlier, time stock combat system that'll allow you to manipulate tactics to win tough battles. So it's not just going to be automated battling. There'll be shops where you can trade in-game items so that these you'll be able to use for things like upgrading. The Monez is here for the play to earn revolution and I think we're going to see a second wave in terms of play to earn. Obviously we saw last year there was a huge influx of people coming into play to earn. Games like this that offer a variety of PvE and PvP and social features with good complex graphics and quality design, I think you're going to start to see a lot more people moving into the NFT gaming space because it, before it was, you know, you make a comparison of, well, I, would, I can earn whilst I'm playing, but some of the games in NFT gaming space, you wouldn't really play for free. Um, so you're not actually incentivized to play, it's more just about earning money. Games like this will be fun and therefore you will be incentivized to just play, but then you'll get little rewards along the way in you know a player driven economy up until now we've had a lot of good games that may have been really good like 20 years ago but they don't offer that much in terms of up-to-date quality gameplay games like this i think will be the type of games that bring people into the nft gaming spaces this is a game that i think will be really attractive and having these nfts heroes equipment materials houses holding these assets now could be really lucrative because when we start to see more people come into the blockchain gaming space there's just going to be more demand for these nfts and if you're somebody who likes grinding on games taking part in guild battles to help get rewards that will help you level up your characters when people come into the game for new you might have a character that's leveled up and be really really good stats so that its value increases from the point at which you bought it so how do you get involved in this initial NFT offering? Well, there'll be 1,000 mystery chests for sale in the Myriad collection, and that will go live on the 5th of April. But you can get whitelist spots in their whitelist event that's currently going on. So the whitelist time will go from March the 25th to April the 3rd, 4 p.m. UTC, and there'll be 40 whitelist slots available. So these will be pretty exclusive. Now, in the total event, there'll be 1,000 chests. They will each be priced at 0.8 AVAX, which is currently about what, $70, $80 for one AVAX. And so it'll be $58 for one chest. I think that's really, really good. And also buyers in the whitelist round will receive a 20% discount. Now, the max purchase wallet will be 10 chests per person. So if 40 of those people all bought their full, full selection of chests, that would leave 600 left ready for the public round. Now, the public round will happen um, the same day, but one hour after the whitelist round at 3 p.m. UTC, and that will go on until 6 p.m. UTC. That will be first come, first serve. So if you want to pick one of those up, then you will have to act quick and have that AVAX ready in your wallet, ready to pick up. You know, I suggest getting everybody off the devices in the home so you make sure that your speed, internet speed is fast as possible to be able to purchase them. The venue for the sales will take place on marketplace.monas.io. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, but here we can see the initial offering has a countdown here. It's 10 days left until this happens now. And that will come with the 50% Myriad commission. So every time that gets sold on, you will get 50% of the transaction fee, which will be 3%. So here's a selection of some of the heroes that you'll be able to pick up. And remember in game, these will all be converted to 3D game avatars. Now this will be the first of few batches. So if you do miss out on it, don't worry. There are 9,000 mystery chests in total to be sold in future batches. Each chest will contain one random NFT corresponding to a hero. During the initial NFT offering from March 23rd, a total of 129 characters will be released. These characters are divided into five different rarities, ranked in ascending order as B, B+, A, R, and S, R. B heroes will have either a two or three star, B+, three. A heroes will have a three star or four star. R heroes will have four stars and SR heroes will have five stars. Note that the one star heroes will not be sold in mystery chests, but they may be likely to appear in the game later on. If you want to see the specific heroes available, you can go to the white paper, which will also be in the description below, and you can check out the different heroes that are available for the different star ratings. That will also detail the skills that they will have, 
and some of their hostility, whether they have it. So you can see hostility towards Luna and Xan for Iris. The drop rates will be as follows. So there will be a 40% drop rate for B rarities that have two star. 31.5% will be um, three star Bs. And then when we go all the way down to SRs, they will drop at 0.5%. Um, and the rate per hero is 0.02. So there'll be a variety of different heroes, obviously, that you can get from that. Select heroes will be really, really rare then. Getting them will be 0.02%. And being that there's 1,000 mystery chests for sale, you could be one of the only holders of one five-star SR. So they could have it hold a lot of value in the future. You might be wondering how you can get a chance to win one of the whitelist slots. So as mentioned, there was 40 whitelist slots available and they will come through various social um, actions. So joining the Telegram group, chatting the most, top 10 users will get a chance to win a whitelist spot. In Discord, there's three different ways you can win in there. You can either be um, invite people to the server, whoever has the most invites, will get an access, access to the whitelist spots. 10 members will get that. You've got the top Monez adventures. So just from chatting with members, discussing the game, talking about things in the Monez channel, you can have a chance to win one of those whitelist spots. And then we have 10 spots going to people who promote the game in a variety of different ways through social networks like Facebook, Twitter, other Telegram groups, Reddit, and YouTube. So let's check out the pitch deck next to have a little bit more in-depth look at the project, a few extra details. So if you're not really sure what they mean about different generations, first gen was NFTs, the really innovators within the gaming space. Second gen were things like Axie, uh, Infinity, Gods Unchained, Alien Worlds. And now third gen is really where we're at seeing NFTs with play to earn, but better quality. Fourth generation and onwards, we'll likely see bigger companies like Ubisoft, Sega coming into the NFT gaming space, AAA game titles. So the problems with second gen with low quality games, third gen is looking to bring higher quality with real time PVP, a gameplay that has a lot of replayability. Third gen solution for NFTs is that almost ob all objects will be NFTs and that gives more uses for earning and burning tokens. To manage the problems with creating a sustainable economy, you've got to manage things like inflation. So they have anti-inflation mechanisms that mean there's going to be more complex ways to stimulate players to reinvest into the game. Um, loose communication between users, definitely a problem in second gen. Third gen, like this game, will bring more social features to connect players within the game, not having to go to Discord to you know, organize a clan, actually being able to do that all in game from your device. The game will be really accessible as it will be available on iOS and Android devices. It will be available in both English and Korean, and they're targeting really mid and hardcore mobile RPG gamers, people who do want to grind. These type of games are ones where you see people really investing a lot of time into playing these games. Business model will be free to play and play to earn. Now, the competitive advantages they have is the attractive gameplay. You know, we don't see many games like this bringing this quality of 3D design. We see a lot of turn-based gameplay that is 2D. Uh, we're starting to have gameplay that's more complex as well. This will make it massively different from some of the games that we've looked at over the past couple of months. They'll have unparalleled social features, a novel player-driven economy, dynamic tokenomics, and a high-profile team. They want the gameplay experience to be addictive and have that real replayability, and they'll do that through increasing difficulty challenges, engaging storylines, and varied game modes. To earn from Monas, you will need a good strategy and spend time researching and playing the game. As mentioned, they will have over 200 characters, but there will also be thousands of different Monas costumes and items designed to every detail with using the Unity technology. The design they're going for in the gameplay is very anime style. They've got 3D graphics that will be especially suitable for the Asian gamer community, but I think it has mass appeal in loads of other regions as well. These social features are where it's going to definitely stand out from projects that haven't had this complexity in recent games that we've seen releases. So they will have guild features like Declaration of War, Guild War, Kingdom Rule and Tournament Mode. Now each guild will be able to own their own castle. So there will be four areas, Driveway, Square, Outer Castle and Inner Castle. Guild members will be able to defend their castle by placing their heroes in each area and guilds can attack them. So hostile guilds will be able to take over the castles if they can. There will also be a guild lab. This is a place where you can increase both quantity and quality of your guild members with features like member expansion, training ground, and guild skills. You'll be able to upgrade the different areas of your guild castle from ramp, plaza, outer castle, and inner castle enhancement. You'll be able to go to a guild shop where you'll be able to earn rewards according to your guild participation rate and also purchase goods with guild flags. The kingdom invasion feature will be where a guild can wage a war to occupy five kingdoms on the server. 
A guild war will take place in the following order. So there'll be a declaration of war. War is declared on the other guild and each guild will prepare for the war. Then there'll be the guild war. Fierce guild wars through siege and defense of the castle. Then there'll be the kingdom rules. Guilds that have won through guild wars will occupy and rule that kingdom. I think there'll be some real fierce competition in this area. Now, we're moving forward, they have a novel player driven economy. You can look at all the mechanics. This is really just looking at adding utility to a lot of the NFTs that you have and also giving you some incentives to spend those tokens to progress and become more of a competitive player. Having these guilds and tournaments and competitions, these are things that will incentivize people to use the token. There will be two tokens available. So there will be the Mona's governance token. This will be distributed through seed sales, private and public. They'll be distributed for the creator of the game ecosystem, incentivizing the contributor of the DAO governance and treasury fund. Then there'll be in-game fees coming from tournament event pool, in-game crafting fee, in-game hero evolution fee. And then on-chain fees will be things like marketplace transaction fees, summoning fees and staking. There'll also be the NES token. This is the in-game token with an unidentified total supply. You'll be able to earn this token on the daily and it will be determined by the rarity of the characters and their levels. So getting those higher rarities, higher levels will actually impact the income that you make. There'll be incentives to hold the NES token as this will increase your daily earning limit. The NES token will be minted and rewarded to players daily for participation in the eight different game modes. It will be the resource that you need to power all the in-game creation activities like crafting, leveling up, characters, equipment, and summoning. Another important thing for maintaining the economy is that most of the revenue from the Mona's ecosystem will be used to reinvest, give back to users, and control inflation. Token distribution is as follows. So a public sale, they have 35% at TGE, two months cliff, and then eight months linear vesting after that. This could be a really good IDO to get involved in because 35% of token generation, if it 3Xs um, on launch, you would be able to sell off your 35% and make your return of investment and then still get those eight months of 65% left. The project's incubators, Neol Entertainment and Xantas, are projects that have incubated a lot of good games already. Step Hero Multiverse has done really well. Gunfire Hero within that. You've got Hero Fi, Ninico. These are games that I've heard of and are familiar with. These are a few of the games that really were in that generation too. That had good gameplay, but it wasn't good enough to really sustain a stable economy. They have a good team behind them, very high profile that has experience working with teams like Microsoft. You've got experience in the crypto market coming from their advisors. You've got a whole host of game designers, marketing team, technical directors that will be working to bring this project, not just from a game design point of view, but from a blockchain point of view as well into fruition. So the things to look out for really are April the 5th, initial NFT event offering batch one, marketplace release get in follow the socials which will all be down below to get involved in some of those chances to win a whitelist spot you've got april the 26th testnet version will be released so we're going to be waiting a month to be able to actually access the testnet version then april the 27th to the 30th there will be the initial nft event batch 2 offering there will be the main net version release as stated in may may the 24th we can expect the mona's ido so that'll be for the token running through to the 30th then June the 10th, game update version 1.1 will include guild features, tournaments, and summoning. They have plenty more planned beyond that. So following on from that, we will see a lot of updates in Q3, Q4, Q1, going all the way up to Q2 for version 4.0. And then Q4, we'll see version 5.0. And that'll be really when we'll see all these features like Colosseum, dual mode, crafting, release of charms. And that's when we're going to start to see some other extra features like Colosseum, Dual Mode, Death Temple being added into the game. So really, I think they've got enough planned over the next two years to really keep this gameplay fresh and new and exciting. These updates will add more features that will incentivize you to potentially spend to be ready for those. Um, yeah, and I think that's going to be something that's going to be very good for the economy. Probably the main thing that's going to be best for the economy. So if it seems like something you'd be interested, go check it out. As I say, all the links below for the website, the socials, the initial NFT offering and information will be down in the description below. Go check it out. If you really want to dig down into the details of the project, you can check out the white paper. I'll put that in the description below as well. Don't forget to get involved in the Watch to Earn content to have a chance to win one of those five lots of 60 USDT. Apart from that, that is all for this one. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like on the video. It always helps the channel out. Hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with future content. That's all from me. See you guys soon. Thank you.